Hi everyone, this is your superpower kid, Neva Lee Rekla. I'm so extremely excited for today's interview. We are going to be talking about the life of a kid's pastor at Christ Church of the Valley. So Christ Church of the Valley, or CCV, is where my family and I attend church. Basically a huge college campus, but a church. I am a volunteer for the two-year-olds, and I'm a part of the worship team. So I get to sing and dance for the little ones and teach them about God and Jesus, how much they love us, and that we can have superpowers in God and in spirit. And our guest today is super amazing. His name is Jonah Coughlin. He is my pastor in the fifth and sixth grade room. He loves hockey, the Avengers, and Star Wars. He's just so amazing, and I'm so excited to have him on today. So without further ado, Will you help me introduce our guest, Jonah? Hi, Jonah. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? So good. Awesome. Thank you for coming on. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. So what are your superpowers? Superpowers. Other than being super funny, I <laughs> am. I just love being around people. I think that's a superpower of mine is there's not people who... I shy away from. And so getting to to hang out with people from all walks of life has been probably my biggest superpower. That's really cool. I find that sometimes there's people who kind of misjudge before they go up and talk to a person. Yeah. And I admit I'll have my moments where I'm kind of 50, 50. I'm an extrovert at sometimes. So typically on my interviews, I'm always an extrovert, but then sometimes in person with somebody, I'm more of an introvert. And yep. so it's kind of cool having the superpower, just being able to go up to somebody and kind of let God work through you. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. So what does it mean to be a kid's pastor? Yeah, so to be a kid's pastor is um, something that kind of looks different for everybody. You'd probably get a different answer if you asked all of the kids pastors at CCV. Um, but for me, uh, I see my role as the chance to um, lead kids closer to Jesus um, through their coaches and the volunteers that we have in our kids ministry. Um, so a lot of my role is meeting with the coaches uh, and the volunteers who make the ministry run so that they can be equipped to spend time with kids on the weekend and teach them and lead them closer to Jesus. Uh, and just teach them more about who Jesus thinks they are and, and how much he loves them. That's really cool. And church is so amazing. Going to CCV is amazing. And even arriving early just to see kind of the behind the scenes of what work goes into it to get it set up so everyone can have an amazing day there is so amazing. We go from about 3.30 to almost 9 o'clock. And awesome. it's just kind of our relaxation time to kind of let everything that happened in the week just kind of go away. And it is truly amazing. And it's a really big church. Um, it's the largest in Arizona and sixth largest in the nation. So that gives you kind of a frame up for how big it is. Yeah. So how many people actually attend our campus alone? Um. I don't want to just throw out a number. I know it's it's a lot. I know that a majority of CCV, um, whatever attendance numbers they have online, a majority of that attends the Peoria campus. Um, it was the, the campus where it all started, um, which has been cool to see. I've actually gotten to grow up here. Um, and so I've been going to CCV since I was a baby. Um, and oh, so cool. seeing all of the change that has happened has been really cool. Um, it's definitely something I take for granted. Like I look around and I'm like, oh, this is huge. It's always been huge. Um, yeah. But when we do things like our sunrise service or just getting to see the auditorium full um, at Christmas or Easter is really cool to see like, oh, like this is, is truly something special. Yeah. Um, and so that's always a good reminder for me. That's cool. We attended the Christmas service last year and it was so amazing their songs were so cool and mm. it's so hard imagining how big the campus is yeah. and 
that one pastor has the power to bring a huge group of people together and everyone then is in bliss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so basically, what does being a Christian mean to you? Because probably if I were to ask somebody else, they'd have a completely different answer than what I would answer. Right. So what does it mean for you? Yeah. Uh, a phrase that, that I've kind of adopted as my own as a big part of being a Christian is, is just failing forward. Um, mm-hmm. So obviously there's, there's nothing in the Bible that says that we're perfect um, until we move on to, to heaven. Um, and so it's knowing that I'm going to do my best to, to follow God, to read my Bible, to love people, um, knowing that I'm going to mess up, but I'm going to take those mistakes and move forward um, in them. And so being a Christian is just doing your best to love God and love people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just agree. living in Jesus love every single day and knowing that I'm going to make mistakes, even though I'm a pastor and I'm not supposed to make mistakes. Um, yeah. But when I do that, Jesus loves me and died for me. And so I can move forward knowing that. Yeah. And no matter how many times we mess up in a day, that does not change how much God loves us. And That's right. That's so amazing to know because going into a room, being a volunteer, it's my responsibility to stay in love and high high frequency so I can carry that on to the little ones. Mm -hmm. And I can show them you can be in love and you can trust God every step of the way. Right. Mm -hmm. So what is your favorite part of campus to go to? Um, I think I really, I really love the fifth and sixth grade room. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a fun place to hang out. It is colorful. It has games. It's always freezing cold. And so if it's when it's like 110 outside, it's just nice to go in there even for five or 10 minutes just to cool off. Um, but it's just such a, a special place for me. And it's, it's fun to, to get in there sometimes and just kind of take it all in, take the room in. Um, it's just a place I feel comfortable. Yeah, I agree. It's always kind of my like relaxation time after chasing around a bunch of two-year-olds. Yeah. And I love all the two-year-olds. They're amazing, huh. but they are very chaotic at times. And so just being able to go in and talk to my coaches and relax and worship that's probably one of my favorite parts about going to church. That's awesome. That's so good to hear. Yeah. It, it's really amazing. And I would kind of expect it being so big, not being as welcomed, but it's the exact opposite. We've gone to quite a few churches before and none of them, I really felt welcomed. Mm. I kind of felt like everyone was off doing their own thing and coming to CCV has like opened up my heart a little bit. And I've noticed that because it's so big and everyone's kind of been going there for a long time, mm-hmm. everyone's like a big family almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so awesome to hear. That's a cool story. Thank you. So we actually do need to take a quick break. I could go on and on about CCV. <laughs> um, I could probably go on for like weeks. But if you want to hear more about this, you can go watch my mom's show. She talked to Dr. Mark Moore, who's their teaching pastor, about, like, all about church, basically. And they talked a lot more about CCV. And so, Jono, can you let our listeners know where they can go to find out more about you? Uh, Yeah, uh, I am on Instagram. That's pretty much it, Instagram and Facebook. Um, Yeah. You can search me on Facebook by uh, just searching my name, Jonah Coughlin, um, or you can follow me on Instagram at Jonah underscore Coughlin, or if you come to CCV on the weekends, I'll be there in the fifth and sixth grade room hanging out. Um, would love to, to get to meet all of you. And so, yeah, that's where you can hear more about me. Awesome. And definitely go check him out because he is so amazing. has such a big impact on me and on all the other kids in my room. So definitely go check him out. And also, we've been talking with Jonah 
Coughlin about the life of a kid's pastor at CCV. So we'll be right back. Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer -peer learning, intensive one-on-one -on -one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. Okay, we're back and we've been talking with Jonah Coughlin about the life of a kid's pastor at CCV. So we actually get to do funny FaceTime. This is my favorite part. We get to make our funniest faces. Oh, the lights just turned off. Oh. <laughs> Motion lights. <laughs> In three seconds, we're going to make our funniest faces. Are you ready? Just one face or a bunch of faces? Some people do a bunch. Some people do one. I typically do one. Okay, okay. I have one. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I practiced that all yesterday. <laughs> See, I have to work up on changing my faces. Because sometimes oh, yeah, I'll do one in like right. eight interviews in a row. Mm -hmm. So I have to work on them. Yeah, that's hard. I <laughs> I had to like go on the internet and search like funny faces. Uh, there's so many. Yeah. So, many. so what were you like as a kid? Because we get to see you now, but what were you like when you were my age? Uh, I was I was kind of a, a rebel. I talked a lot and didn't think a lot about what I said, um, but I was very energetic, rarely could focus on something for more than like 10 minutes. Um, and yeah, I just loved having fun, loved being outside, um, loved playing sports. And so, yeah, that's pretty much cool. pretty much it. Very active. What type, what type of sports did you do? Uh, I did. I tried all of them. So I tried like baseball and basketball and soccer and football. But uh, once I played hockey, I just stuck with that from hmm. pretty much like age six to like age fifteen. Oh wow! Yeah, that's cool. My cousin, who's seventeen, his name is Nathan. He is a hockey player. He lives in Canada. Oh, that's a lot better place to play hockey than Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. 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 We I went ice skating once in my life. Mm. It was last year, I believe, and I fell so many times. It it's a lot of work. It is. Once you get the hang of it though, it's like riding a bike. You just never yeah. forget. Yeah. Um, I'm a swimmer and so mm. a lot of the times I use if I'm kind of suck at running sometimes mm -hmm. and a lot of people beat me i go i'm a swimmer i yeah. i don't do running and walking and stairs nope <laughs> yeah. all swimming yeah yeah it's it sucks when we have to do dry land yeah my mom was actually a swimmer up until high school i believe so so it runs in the family cool. yeah yep <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. So what was kind of your favorite activity besides sports or playing outside? To do um, we had, we always had video games in the house. And so mm -hmm. that was like the, Oh, it's too hot outside to, to play. And so let's go play video games. And I mean, I'm the, yeah. the youngest of three boys. And so usually oh, wow. just getting beaten video games, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, that was always something that that we always did. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I am the baby of my family mm -hmm. by a whole lot. My brother is twenty two and my sister is eighteen. Oh yeah, so, so there's a there's a good gap there. Yep. So our interests are a little bit different, but yeah. I love them. My sister and I did something where it was my Christmas gift to her. We went out to this giant seafood buffet 
we love sushi so much. Yeah. And it was like seafood and a bunch of different kind of various options. And then we came back and we played Minecraft and we probably sat on the couch for like three hours straight <laughs> just playing Minecraft. That's that awesome. Fun. Yeah. yeah. So what's your favorite part about being the baby of your family? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I got the best and I'm sure my family would disagree, but I got the best of like what is passed down um, just for my parents of like, I got like the temperament of my mom, um, but also kind of have like the wit and the social skills, I guess of really both my parents. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of people, when they ask like, Oh, are you more like your mom or your dad? I'm like, pretty much like a mix a 50 50 split of both yeah so i guess that's good but other than that it it was a lot of like there's not a ton of pictures of me as a baby there's not a ton of videos of me as a baby mm. i asked them like how come and my parents were like you're the third one like we already we already have pictures and videos of babies we don't need more yeah so, and i always got free clothes because just they just kept getting passed down yeah i have a shirt from my sister that she gave me when she was like when she was around 12 and I was like three, no, like I was like six. So that was three years ago. Yeah. And it finally fits me. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome. so before it was just like this giant thing. Yeah. Like, I could use it as a blanket. Right. But now it finally fits me and it yeah. is great. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't get hand-me-downs from my sister a whole lot because she gets hand-me-downs from her boyfriend. So she wears uh, mostly his clothes and then right. and then she wears her clothes. And so I get hand-me-downs from my friend mm -hmm. and she gives me giant trash bags. <laughs> and then I give my hand-me-downs to my cousins. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. If it keeps on giving. Yep. So what is your favorite verse from the Bible? Oh, favorite verse. Uh, I feel like what... Like going into to my job as a pastor, uh, the verse I really held on to is John fifteen five, um, which I don't have one hundred percent memorized, but it is just Jesus talking about how He's the vine and we're the branches, and how um, when we put our trust in Him, um, He abides in us, and so just without Him that we can't do anything. And so that was a a good verse for me to read going in as a pastor, because as a pastor I can only do so much um, where ultimately Jesus is the, the one that is saving people. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that, that has been my favorite verse for the past like year and a half. That's cool. Mm -hmm. My favorite verse so far is forgive them father for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. um, it's really helpful because people will say mean things. They'll do mean things. But at the end of the day, if you go back and talk to them, they're not going to know that they did it. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of only me that remembers it and so it kind of helps me just mm -hmm. stay strong and it helps me in the hard times to just go maybe they don't know what they're saying to me yeah and it really helps that's awesome that's a good one thanks so do you have a favorite christian song i do i do mm -hmm. i have a lot <laughs> me and my, my mom, she, she started calling like her, like, just to like, it'll be like, oh, favorite song for a week, a month. She calls it her vitamin. Um, mm -hmm. like you take a vitamin every day. And so she listened to the song every day. Um, mine right now uh, is off the new Hillsong United album, their song, Another in the Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, just talks about how, I mean, it's, it's referencing the story from Daniel of, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego of them like being in physically in fire, uh, mm -hmm. and the uh, king, whichever king it was, looked in the furnace and was like, "Hey, I thought we threw three people in there because I see four. Um, so just knowing that in whatever we face, whatever we go through, that Jesus has not abandoned us, mm -hmm. that He's right there with us, and so that's been a a song that I've been uh, probably embarrassingly singing in my car. So. Yeah. Yeah. My my favorite one right now is Merc it's from Mercy Me. It's called Even If. And oh yeah. 
have you seen the new movie, the, um, I can only imagine. I have not seen it yet. It, it's great. Yeah. Um, it's his whole life story. And even if kind of talks about like, even in the hardest times, Jesus and God never leave our sides. Mm-hmm. So basically what you're talking about and something embarrassing I do is we have a speaker mm-hmm. in I'm sitting in our vortex area. It's kind of where we hang out and pray all the time. And we love listening to music. And so whenever it comes on, like I'll be in my room hanging up my clothes. I did this once. I was in my room hanging up my clothes from the laundry. I come out, slide down on my knees (laughs) and just start screaming the lyrics. So that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And we can basically worship every single day. We don't have to be at mm-hmm. church for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Worship is everything we do. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So did you ever volunteer before you became a pastor? I did. Uh, so I started volunteering when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, just my parents tore name tags off at the, at the kids building. Um, and so I started doing that. And then one of the days, uh, one of the kids pastors stepped out and said, Hey, why don't you, why don't you start coaching? And I had like, I had great junior high coaches when I was a junior high student. And so that was kind of on my, uh, my horizon for like, Oh, I want to be a junior high coach. And I was like, well, you can coach in fourth and fourth and or fourth, fifth and sixth. It was at the time. Um, and so I started coaching there and then coached in junior high. Um, I was a coach in high school for a little bit. And then now I currently volunteer. Um, with our Exceptional Stars program, which is our uh, special needs branch of our sports ministry. Oh, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so fun volunteering. It's It never gets old, really. There's yeah. always that one kid in the room who either wants to be left alone mm-hmm. or who never wants you to leave them. And right. so it's the best day for me. I'm like, okay, I respect you. You don't want me to hold your hand or play with you at all. I'm fine with that. Then there's that one kid in class who just comes up and hugs you. Right. It always makes my day. Um, I remember the first time I volunteered, Mm. I had quite a few kids come up and just attack me with hugs. Yeah. And that's when I decided I'm going to stay here. Mm -hmm. And it never, never gets old. Yeah. That's one of the, the best things about, especially young kids, Mm-hmm. Um, that young is they, they don't know any better than to like, oh, I'm going to hug this person. And so, yeah. that's, you know, like there's no like other motive of like, oh, if I hug this person, then she'll give me snack first or she'll, you know, let yeah. me play with these toys a little bit longer. They're just like, oh gosh, <laughs> Fuck. Uh, they're just like, I'm going to hug this person because yeah. I want to. Exactly. Yeah. It's and really cool. I always up look up to the two-year-olds like because it's almost like they don't they haven't learned enough they haven't been on the planet long enough to know about like hurt and stuff and so they just go up with no fear yep and they hug somebody and now if i were to do that i'd be like that's a little weird i'm not gonna go up and hug this random stranger right but i realize that they don't care they're just being themselves. And even if they're not fully aware of it, right. they're just so inspirational in that fact because they go up and hug people. They scream and dance. And it's just really cool seeing their playful energy. Mm-hmm. And so it always reminds me to play. And I just look up to them and go, what would this toddler do? Yeah, they right. would sing and dance. I'm going to sing and dance. So... Yeah. Yep. Live like a toddler. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Yeah. Except sometimes they are really loud, but I admit sometimes I'm really loud. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> sometimes you just have to be loud. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what is your favorite food to get on campus? Ooh, I, well, first off the French fries, that's like a non-negotiable. Even if I go to the grill and get a burger, I'll walk and get French fries. Yes. Um, but usually uh, it's like I go, I grab French fries and then I look to see if there's chicken wings. Oh, 
And if there's not chicken wings, then I just like, okay, I'll have pizza. So yeah, yeah, they do have the, really good pizza. Yeah, and it, the slices are like as big as my head, <laughs> so I can only get one slice, and it's that's enough. Normally, I have to eat like four. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of my favorite things I ate there was my parents got me. I just wanted a surprise. They got me this like kind of Chinese food box of ribs, baked mm-hmm. beans, and a baby pie. And it was so good. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I love when they make like full meals and they're always so good. Mm-hmm. My even though I could like stock up on everything there. Yeah. I have to admit the burgers with bacon mm. are delicious. Anything with bacon is delicious. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you could cover like a waffle and bacon and it would yeah. taste delicious. You could cover vegetables and bacon and they would taste amazing. Exactly. <laughs> we do something called jalapeno poppers. Oh and yeah. They are really good. We cut little baby bell peppers in half because sometimes the spiciness is way too hot. Right. Because my grandfather actually grows jalapenos and some of them, they were hot. It was bad. Yeah. The baby bell peppers, you can always trust. So you cut them in half, you take out their skin, then you mix up cream cheese and Mexican blend cheese, smear it on, wrap them in bacon, grill them, it's delicious. Delicious. That sounds amazing. It does. Huh. Now I'm getting hungry. I'm yeah, talking no. about all this food. Yeah. It's getting close to lunchtime. <laughs> yep. So we get to do something called Super Neva questions. Right. So what's going to happen is I'm going to ask you as many questions as I can, as fast as I can, and you're going to answer them as fast as you can. Gotcha. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. What's your favorite color? Red. What's your favorite animal? Tiger. What, if you could travel anywhere in the world with no matter how far it is, where would you travel? Iceland. Ooh. If you could be any character from the Bible, who would you be? David. I'd want to be Jesus, to be honest. That I'll was my first. Something. That was my first thought. I didn't know if that was allowed. It was. <laughs> like literally anybody, you could be one of the farmer people, and it would work out. I think David um, would be good though, because he killed animals with his bare hands. He seems like a pretty ooh, tough dude. That sounds cool. Yeah. Now I want to be David. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could have any pet in the world, what would it be? A wolf. Ooh, that's a good answer. If you could have a pet dragon or a pet unicorn, what would you choose? Uh, unicorn. Dragons are dangerous. Well, I'd be. I would have a dragon, and I'd raise it young, and mm. that way, free s'mores all year round. And oh yeah, basically a free airplane. Just I'd, hey, take me to to Dubai, and then they'd just be like, okay. And Hop on the dragon off. and you go. Yeah. Exactly. Genius. <laughs> See, unicorns can also stab people with their pointy horns. Yeah. So I want to get it angry. But I could become a piece of bacon if the dragon got angry as well. So. Right. Um, if you could be any superhero in the Avengers universe, who would you be? Captain America. I'd be Captain Marvel. She's oh. pretty awesome. She is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you could be, oh, if you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? The power to fly. Ooh. If you could be the fastest runner or the fastest swimmer, what would you be? The fastest swimmer. You could just swim okay. across the ocean. Exactly. Yeah. See, I don't like oceans though. Oh. Because once you get too deep. I have a very huge fear of megalodons. <laughs> okay, yeah. Ra- very <laughs> rational fear. Exactly. Yeah. Even though people say they're extinct, but who knows? We don't and even know what like half the ocean has. True. Yeah. Who knows 
YouTube could tell us there's like a flying starfish. Right. <laughs> and we'd believe it. Right. See, I have a very deep diving pool and mm-hmm. connected to my swimming pool where I do swim practice. And I was thinking about the Megalodon. And yeah. then my coach decides to say, kick against the wall and pretend the shark's chasing after you. And I squeak. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably the worst swim practice day I've ever had. Yeah. And then I would keep on looking over in the diving area. And from now on, I choose like the farthest away from the diving area. Yeah. That Stay way I'm, I'm the last person to be eaten. I can yeah. just run out. By that time you get, you could just get out of the pool. Exactly. Just be like, bye. Yeah. Take that shark. <laughs> no. Um, if you could be any inanimate object, what would you be? Um, a TV. Ooh, that's good. Like you just be able to watch whatever you wanted. Yeah. And people, I bring people together. Exactly. Yeah. I would probably want to be maybe an Xbox. Ooh. That's a good one. There's some really fun games. Yeah. Um, enjoy. Yeah. What was your favorite video game when you were younger? Um, when I was younger, Mario Kart. Ooh, had some intense right. Mario Kart battles in my childhood. We play Worms. Ooh. Have you heard of it? I have not. Um, it's basically like a war between these little worm, worm characters oh. and. You can do Armageddon, and so it just blows up a bunch of people. <laughs> and there's a concrete donkey, and so it goes, and it goes down really fast. And there's some intense screaming going on. I imagine. That sounds violent. <laughs> I would treat myself if any time I'd get a good hit or something, I would eat a piece of chocolate. Yeah. It's great. Two in one. Yeah, you got to reward yourself. Yep. Um, if you could be invisible or invincible, what would you be? Invincible. That'd be awesome. It would be. Because just... you could basically fly. You could just jump off of a building. Yeah. And like soar, pretty much. You I could be do that. a real life superhero. You could. To protect be- the president or other famous people. Yeah. You can just step in front of anything and you're fine. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I interviewed a magician. His name was Robert Ray. He said that there's a place where this guy is on an island and if you can prove to him that you have actual superpowers, he'll pay you like a bunch of money. I need to get actual superpowers. Yeah, just... I'm going to do some intense praying. I'm (laughs) going to learn to fly one day. Yeah. Keep jumping off of things and maybe one day you'll fly. (laughs) Keep them like jump off of chairs onto mattresses. Yeah. Not like buildings onto the ground. Yeah. That'd be bad. Mm. That wouldn't go on. Not good. Not good. (laughs) If you could be any famous actor, who would you be? Hmm. I feel like I would be I think I would be Chris Evans because he gets to be right, that's his name? The guy that plays Captain America? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, I think that would be I think I would be him. Because they'd yeah. get to, like people just see him like, oh, Captain America. Yeah. That'd be cool. I'd probably want to be Adam Sandler. Mm. He's really funny. He's hilarious. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen Blended? I haven't. Somebody mm-hmm. told me to watch it. Because it was on Netflix. But it's not on Netflix anymore. Oh, it's not? No. But he has a new movie on Netflix about a murder mystery. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds cool. But you need to watch it. Okay. Go on an airplane, rent it. It's great. Got it. (laughs) Um if you could watch any movie and never get bored of it. Like you could watch it multiple and multiple times, 
and never yep. get bored of it, what would you watch? I really love the second Avengers. Ooh, yeah. I'd yeah. probably watch Avengers Endgame. I'm not going to say any spoilers because I hate it when people spoil movies for me. I could not but handle that. My mom went off of Instagram and Facebook because so many people were writing spoilers for it. Yeah. And it, Even the it's Spider-Man. irritating. Spider-Man yeah. trailer, which it said at the beginning, like, hey, there's a spoiler in this trailer. So if you haven't seen Endgame, don't watch it. Yeah. But it was that movie was an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> um, Endgame was very, very sad for me. Losing some people. I was sitting there clenching onto my dad's arm, about ready to start bawling. Yeah. It was emotional, man. And it felt like there was just a whole period of my life just ended exactly like i i don't know where to go from here i don't know yeah. what to do i want i didn't want the movie to end because i knew that that was like the era of those avengers is over yeah i'm not ready for no avengers <laughs> no. i i just want it to continue on and right. my wish is to be in an avengers movie that would be I'm awesome gonna, i'm gonna start avengers kids movies Ooh. yeah yeah that seems fun but I have to admit, I despise Thanos. He's not a good dude. Not a good dude. He did some mean things. A lot of mean things. <laughs> a lot of mean things. Yes. Yeah. But everyone out there, definitely go watch Avengers Endgame because yeah. it rocks. It's Lock great. out three hours, maybe even nine hours, so you can watch the movie three three times Yeah. in your day. and. It's going to be worth it. Just block out a week and watch all of the whole universe, Marvel Universe movies. Yes. And it is going to be worth it'll it. will change your life. It will. Yep. It really will. Because <laughs> it, it kind of teaches me, like, we can have superpowers if we trust in God and we have faith. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, what is one thing that has kind of stood out for you in the Avengers movies that kind of reminds you of something in the Bible? Uh, I think uh, a picture of the Avengers um, paints, and there's actually a quote, I think it's in the first Avengers, um, that they're talking about, or it's Nick Fury talking about Agent Coulson and how Agent Coulson uh, had this idea to form the Avengers because he said like, what if we took a bunch of, um, I mean, in this case it's superheroes, but like superheroes and like place them all together. And they would like, what would they become when they became something like bigger, like stood for something bigger than themselves. I think in the Bible, um, you look and it starts with the disciples of they're not super people at all. They're just normal everyday people. Um, but then you put them together and then you add Jesus to the mix and they become something bigger, um, which then once Jesus dies and resurrects and goes to heaven or goes to be with God, uh, you see them go out into the world and create these churches and the church um, is kind of like Avengers in the sense that when we're like separately, if, if you and I are going out and trying to accomplish different things then we aren't going to be great at what we're doing, but if we're out, maybe separately trying to accomplish the same thing, um, which obviously our, our mission at CCB is, is for the whole city of Phoenix, the whole Valley of Phoenix to know Jesus. Um, and so when, when our whole church CCB goes out to do that and accomplish that, um, we're also partnering with churches across the country who are trying to reach their area for Jesus. And so at the end of the day, we're all read the whole church is stronger together we all try and reach people for Jesus. And so that way we're like the Avengers. I like that. That's a cool depiction of the church. And whenever I'm, I go, I'm going to just keep on replaying the Avengers movies in my head. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> so one last final question before we have to wrap up, what would you say to somebody if they were having trouble having faith? What would you say to them to help them get back on their feet? Um, hmm. 
uh, this isn't my my saying, but something that I um, love to to tell people or to just encourage people with is is just win the day. Um, and that actually is a quote I believe from the Oregon football organization. Um, is like you can have you can have faith in God for for one day. Um, of like, hey, I don't know what it looks like, but I'm going to trust God today with how today goes. Um, and so if they're struggling with something and they're struggling with the loss of a loved one, um, with a family change, with a work change, um, just a, a struggle of, of seeing their value and worth, it's uh, I can look to God for, for today. Um, yeah. And not taking it past that, not taking it before that of just today, I'm going to trust God, whatever that looks like. Um, so just just win the day, whatever that looks like, whatever that looks like, praying one time, reading a Bible verse a day. Yeah. I really like that. That's great advice. Thanks. So thank you so much for coming on today. I really enjoyed talking to you. Will you join me in the sign-off? Absolutely. Okay. Remember, kids, that we all have superpowers and we, we can change, can change the, world. the world. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jonah. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye. See ya.